Hello and welcome to Global Eye. I'm Parikshit Lutra. In a bid to boost private sector cooperation in the semiconductor sector, India and the United States have inked an initial pact which would facilitate business opportunities and develop an ecosystem to reduce their dependency on China and Taiwan. In fact, the U.S. imposed export controls to curb high-tech semiconductors being exported to China. Joining me now to discuss this further, I'm joined by Ajit Minocha, President and CEO of Semiconductor Equipment and Materials International, Paul Shah, Vice President and Director of Studies at Center for New American Security, and Jeffrey Bean, Program Manager of Tech Policy at ORF America. But before we go across to our guests, I caught up with Thea Rosman Kendler, the Assistant Secretary of Commerce at the Export Administration in the United States. Let's play out that exclusive interview for you. I'm so excited to be here. This is a great time, a promising time in the U.S.-India high technology relationship. We uh, look at strategic trade controls as the building blocks for all the innovation that we hope to accomplish with India. And so I'm here to talk about our common interests, our common security outlook, and how the United States and, and India can work together even more closely for secure trade, which leads to open and accessible trade. Right. I'd like to ask you about the U.S. export controls that were imposed with regard to high-end chips and high-end semiconductor technology reaching China, what is the larger aim of that? Because there is also a worry in the U.S. industry that it may uh, backfire on them as well. We imposed those controls last fall with a very clear national security picture in mind. We targeted only the most advanced chips because we did not want to unduly interfere with commercial trade. By targeting the most advanced chips that, that can be used in supercomputers, that can be used in artificial intelligence programs, we're targeting China's military modernization capabilities. Mm -hmm. We're also targeting their abuses of human rights. Mm -hmm. Uh, when they uh, can build uh, supercomputers and data centers based on those supercomputers, uh, it enables their ability to track minority populations. Mm. Uh, and so all of these activities are uh, contrary to U.S. national security and foreign policy. Mm. And uh, we took decisive action uh, under the Biden-Harris administration to make sure that we are cutting off China's access, access to these technologies. Right. Uh have you also seen countries like Russia circumventing those uh, export controls and sanctions when it comes to uh, high-end technology, including high-end semiconductors? Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's something that we're watering very closely. We are concerned that uh, countries and companies are being taken advantage of as Russia builds illicit procurement networks to try to gain access to technologies that we and 38 other global economies have cut off from Russia and Belarus. We are... Um, you know, we, we see in the debris found on the battlefield in Ukraine that Russia is using components in its missiles, in its weaponry, its drones that are manufactured outside of Russia. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that they do not have the capacity to rebuild and repair their war machine. Mm -hmm. So we, we've looked very closely at um, any instance of backfill or uh, circumvention of our regulations through third countries, and we'll take appropriate uh, responsive action under U.S. law. Right. Uh, are you also seeing uh, some of those semiconductors reaching Russia via India in some form or the other? Uh, is, this a, is this a message? Is this a concern that you've raised with the Indian industry and the Indian government? We're working with partners all over the world to make sure that uh, this this trade that Russia is not using uh, their industry to, to facilitate this illegal trade. Right. But uh, specifically on India? That's not something I'm going to get into. Thanks. All right. Uh, to ask you about uh, the MOU, MOU on semiconductors that India and U.S. signed recently during the high-level visit of uh, Secretary Raimondo, what will be the next steps in terms of operationalizing the MOU? Uh, what could be India's role in that collaboration? I think the details of the MOU are still being worked out. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we are close partners with India on secure trade, and that enables uh, lots of different opportunity under the MOU. Right. Uh, what are the building blocks that you would like to lay down as far as export controls go to allow for easier collaboration, easier export 
of semiconductor technology from US to India? What are the building blocks that you would like to identify and put in place? Well, actually, as it stands now, we treat India, because it is a major defense partner, we treat India as if it were uh, akin to a NATO partner. Um, under export controls, we have very strong building blocks already in place with India. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to future collaboration as we identify emerging technologies to build those blocks together. Right. Uh, in terms of having a global acceptance for those export controls that U.S. is imposing, uh, is there a need for that? Is U.S. trying to have a multilateral acceptance with more countries on board with these uh, controls? We are always looking for a multilateral approach to export controls. Uh, one of my colleagues once described export unilateral controls as damming half the river. When there's foreign availability of technology, we must have multilateral cooperation with our partners to make sure that we are effective in the controls that we impose. Right. My, my final set of questions. Uh, what are the issues that you would like to put on the table uh, ahead of this dialogue when it comes to export controls to facilitate trade between the two countries in high-end technology? One thing that's come to, we've come to realize during our week in India is that we have some availability for smoother trade without license that doesn't seem to be fully taken advantage of by Indian companies. And so we'd like to uh, do more education and outreach to Indian companies and to their U.S. exporters to make sure they understand that there may be smoother ways, faster, more effective and efficient ways to receive trade from the United States that isn't being used right now. All right, so that was Thea Rosman Kendler, the Assistant Secretary for Export Administration, talking about export controls to stop high-end chips from going to China and Russia. Let's open this up for our viewers. Let me go across to uh, Paul, uh, who's on our panel right now. Paul, thank you very much. Uh, give us a sense of the larger aims of the U.S. export controls. We had the Assistant Secretary, uh, Kendler, explaining that U.S. wants to deter China from getting that high-end technology, those advanced chips, which can be used in AI, military weapons as well. But is the U.S. really successful in doing so? Well, we've seen that the U.S. and many countries are very deeply concerned about China's military buildup in the region. China has been threatening many surrounding countries, India, Taiwan, many others. And AI is an important enabler of Chinese military power. And so the U.S. controls are very targeted. They go after an estimated 1 percent of the chips that China is importing. But these most advanced chips are essential to control these to make sure that China is not leveraging this technology to improve its military and to threaten the region. Right. Uh, Mr. Manocha, what's your sense? Is this really helping the U.S. industry, harming the U.S. industry and impacting the global supply chains? What could be the long term impact of such export controls? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Luthra. The, in my opinion, uh, the, the concerns that the U.S. has raised about the national security, uh, I think uh, it's not, we are not there to second, second guess them. I fully agree with the, their concerns and the actions they are taken. Is it helping the U.S. industry? Uh, not yet. I mean, of course, uh, there's a major uh, export to, the, to these countries that we're talking about. And, uh, but I think uh, things will uh, balance out uh, as a function of time. I, I look at it this way. The industry is growing through leaps and bounds. I mean, our industry was $600 billion uh, IC revenue last year, and it's going to go to $1 trillion by 2030. So there's a need for growth of this industry. And uh, I see that USA-India co collaboration will really help to create uh, another uh, hub for semiconductors. And there's a need for that. Right. Uh, Jeff, if I could bring you in on the specific aspect that the Assistant Secretary had spoken about, about how Russia is able to circumvent the U.S. export controls. They are being able to procure semiconductors, essential components necessary to make weapons from third countries. How is Russia doing that? How can the U.S. act against those companies, uh, those countries? Does it really have the wherewithal or would it need 
multilateral consensus to really implement these export controls successfully and take action uh, against countries which are supplying these semiconductors to Russia? Thanks, Rishit. Uh, great question. I, I want to emphasize that with respect to smuggling these chips, some of them are extremely small, especially at the, the die size level. So uh, you have to have a really fine net if you were hoping to capture all of these ships uh, reaching uh, the battlefield in Russia. However, the point you make about multilateralizing these controls is a really important one. Uh, in the uh, imposition of the export controls that were announced in October of last year with respect to semiconductors, their focus, as uh, you and colleagues have pointed out, on advanced GPUs uh, at the data center level, on China's uh, capacity to focus on supercomputer development in the future, and of course, on China's ability to manufacture uh, advanced chips. And so for the United States to make an effective policy, the controls as they were announced were unilateral and extraterritorial. And it, the U.S. secured a key win earlier this year in its uh, ability to convince the Japanese and Dutch governments to join join an agreement to limit semiconductor manufacturing equipment sales uh, to China, uh, to Russia, and to uh, other uh, geopolitical competitors and, and bad actors. And so with this development to uh, allow the U.S. to prevent, uh, in conjunction with other global like-minded partners and allies, the sale of extreme ultraviolet lithography equipment, as well as the next step down uh, to deep ultraviolet lithography uh, immersion equipment, to China and other actors, uh, that's a clear win in terms of multilateralization. From my perspective, the next step will be, can the U.S. bring uh, other partners and allies uh, on board that are like-minded to secure the supply chain in the other areas of chips that they've identified with respect to the uh, export controls? That will be key. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break at this point, but don't go anywhere. Our extensive discussion with Paul, Jeff Bean and Ajit Manocha continues on the other side. We'll be right back in a short while.